What's up, everybody? It's Make It Make Sense, and I'm super excited today. As you guys know, y'all got me into the Steve Harvey stuff, and once we started like pulling at these threads, it has not stopped since. But one person who kept popping up in all of the conversations was Geneva's Closet, who I was not familiar with, but now I am. So uh, I reached out. She was a really lovely lady, uh, but she has kept her ears to the streets and her feet on people's necks. So uh, <laughs> without further ado, good morning, Geneva. Good morning. You said I kept my feet on people's neck. I was like, oh, oh, OK, OK. On the neck, people on the neck. <laughs> good morning, Mims. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Um. I am actually really excited about this because one thing that I do is I like to connect with like people, people, and okay. we get so engrossed in like the celebrity that we forget that the juiciest stories come from your neighbor. That's Literally, true. That is true. I'm starting this other channel uh, and my Patreon for interviews. And I just got um, someone who is you know open about being an escort who married one of her Johns. And um, I'm super excited to get in there and really talk and get to like the human side of this. So that's coming, but- Congratulations. Um, I love real people and real people have real stories. And what people don't understand is your neighbor is the one that movies are created about. It's not the celebrities, we get that, but it's your neighbors who have like the real stories and the real, can be impactful and change the world. So super excited. Absolutely, Mundo. I want to say good morning to all of your people. Hey to all of Mims, make it make sense, subscribers and followers. How are you doing this morning? And to any of my people that may be in here, thank you for joining us today. And for the people that's just watching, good morning. Hey, how you doing? So Geneva has been in the game for a while. Um, and what I will be doing after this live, because she told me, listen to one of my audiobooks. Listen to one of my audiobooks. And I was like, Geneva, I, you know, I don't be having all the time in the world. However, I listen and now I am hooked. So I will be sharing. Um, <laughs> Geneva is the one person on earth who has this book. Could you hold it up again? Men will lie when the truth will do. This is one of Steve Harvey's alleged mistress's book. And Geneva is the sole person reading it. So after we get into our interview, our conversation, we'll re we will read some juicy excerpts from the book, especially the part where she alleges that Marjorie came to see her woman to woman. It was a it was on some hello Barbara, this is Shirley type situation. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you know, oh, and on this thing, you don't have to mute in between. Okay. You definitely do not have to mute in between. So okay. I want to I want to start with your experience with Steve Harvey. Um, what interested you in the Steve saga? What pulled you in? I guess what originally pulled me in was because um, this was back in like maybe about 2016, maybe something. I had just seen Mary Harvey on you know different things maybe on youtube or, or interviews and stuff talking about the steve harvey had not gave her everything that she was supposed to get in her divorce and where a lot of people was like oh she's just upset because he done moved on i just kind of felt like there was some ring of truth to the things that she was saying and then in 2017 i just happened to be on youtube and i seen um essie barry just in case people don't know who she is she is the widow of Fred rerun Barry from the 70 sitcom what's happening so I seen her on YouTube talking about Mary Harvey and um showing papers and she just had a whole lot to say about Mary wasn't getting the things that she was supposed to get in her um divorce she was talking about um some divorce decrees and everything else so I reached out to um Essie Barry and then she responded back and we started talking and then that's how I, you know, based off of the um, information she was giving me, I was like, really? So then I just went and did my research on the stuff she was saying to validate that she was, that what she was saying was really truthful. And it was. And that's how I kind of got started with this whole thing. I want to say that now that I've like been deep diving, um, mm -hmm. 
with a lot of M Mary Harvey's interviews, which is Steve Harvey's second wife, like some of the stuff she says really tugs at your heartstrings. Um, technically, when Mary met Steve, I don't think he told her that he was married because she said in one of her interviews that um, it was actually his mother who told her um, you can't marry him because he's already married. And it's like, OK, you stay with him. She said that she helped him actually finance his first comedy club. So you see these very strong women in his life. Marsha, his first wife, kept the kids while he was on the road, eventually had another baby by him in 91 when the allegations were that she found out about Mary while she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. In addition, Terry also alleges that in 1991, that's when she met Steve as well. Mm -hmm. So I want to um, say there are very strong women and even Steve credits Marjorie for the tr upward trajectory of his career after they met. So there have been very strong women, including Terry, who was a business owner. Like, and I believe I read somewhere that Marsha, his first wife is also a degreed professional woman who, if I'm not I, I believe she's like an actual like therapist or, or counselor, relationship okay. type coach. So okay. each one of these women has in their own right helped build him up. But there's been so much <laughs> like yeah. the cheating, the alleged affairs, all these things. It's crazy. So I'm I'm slowly uh, mm -hmm. getting into it. But Geneva's yeah. all the way in. Geneva. It's a lot to it. You know, it's a lot to it. And like I said, I first started reporting on this story in 2017. It is 2023. It's like six years later. So, 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 so much as far as the dates and stuff, like, I don't remember when we were talking about the dates, you was like, Geneva, do you, I was like, ma'am, I don't know. I'm having a hard time remembering the dates, but what I do remember is that they were like right back to back to back that Steve Harvey tries to make a scene. You know, like even when he talks about marrying Marjorie, he mm -hmm. makes it seem as if he had divorced Mary, left Mary, and then he got with Marjorie and he started, you know, and, and, and then they got married. That's not what happened. He was still with Mary. Him and Mary were still in a relationship. That's why Mary mentions that there were... Um, um, papers in her divorce decree or papers that had to do with her her home and stuff that had Marjorie name on it. Mary tells stories of her still being married to Steve Harvey and Marjorie calling her house acting as if she was Steve's personal secretary. And um, Mary knowing that, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is not Steve's personal secretary. You know, like she already knew who the uh, secretary was. And um, that's some of the things that Essie Berry was trying to make known. Like people, I'm telling you, Marjorie been in this, had been in the scene for a long time. She was over there being shysty with Steve, trying to make sure that Mary did not get the things that she was supposed to get in her divorce. Now she did get some other stuff, but she did not get everything that she was supposed to get. And that's the part that makes you feel, you know, sorry for Mary. Like, man, that's messed up. How he did you, Steve, and the whole, and even how they did her with the Winton situation and Marjorie. But the part that you don't feel bad um, about is when you find out what happened with her and Marsha, how that whole situation um, happened, how she did find out that Steve Harvey was married, but she was kind of like the mistress too. And she stayed with him despite knowing, even though she got mad at me when I told her she was the mistress too, she didn't like that. But she was at one point. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and make Geneva an honorary straight shooter. Uh, she has been made <laughs> an honorary straight shooter. That's what we call ourselves around here, the straight shooters. Shoot them up. Shoot them up. <laughs> so a straight shooter. Pow, pow. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, we got about 350 people in the chat. Um, we definitely will be um, dropping Geneva's link to her channel. Um, if you are not subscribed to Make It Make Sense, go ahead and subscribe to Make It Make Sense. Uh, if, and we need you guys to like the video. This is a early morning interview. YouTube is not accustomed to these from me. So uh, we got to let YouTube know that we're here. And that's what the likes will do. So get the likes up. We could get 300 likes. That would be great. 
So when you, because go ahead and tell us about the gag order, because I want to make sure that um, you are covered in this interview. So what happened was that, right? Because I'm trying not to draw I me, mean, because I'm telling you people, these stories are pretty long, but I'm not, I'm not going to drag it out. So what happened was that in, um, I'm going to say probably about 2018, 2019, because I usually have these things sitting right here, but I move things around. It's probably about 2018, 2019. I was on the internet. Um, yeah, it was 2018. I was doing some research about Steve Harvey and his properties that um, was inside Mary's divorce decree that she said that she didn't get. In the midst of me doing my research, I came across a link. And when I clicked this link, this link had all of this information in there about Steve Harvey's properties and about uh, uh, life insurance policies. It mentioned other businesses and mentioned cars and, and just all of this stuff. So I took the information, made it, made a video on it, and um, but I did not give all the information. I did not show all the information. Now, Essie Berry, which was the power of attorney for Mary Harvey. That's why she was so involved, because she was trying to help Mary get get her stuff back from Steve, find out what was going on. Um, May, uh, Essie Berry had um, some relationship ties to the National Enquirer, to Radar Online. So she connected me to one of the reporters and, and journalists or whatever over there. And I sold that information that I had found to the National Enquirer. The National Enquirer printed that story on, I think it was like September or October of 2018. And that's what pissed Steve Harvey and them off. <laughs> well, once it reached the National Enquirer. what you say, ma'ams? Well, did they, did they try to gag order the National Enquirer? No, they did not. No, they did not. They sent me an email that I had received probably about six, seven o'clock in the morning. I woke up, checked my emails, and I see something coming from Bobby Edmonds. That's one of Steve Harvey attorneys. And it was saying that Geneva of Geneva's Closet, you are not to talk to Essie Berry. You are not to talk to Mary Harvey. You are not to talk about anything that has to do with the divorce, blah, 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 blah. That's what it said. And and I didn't do anything with that information, but be like, you know, like I took offense to you trying to tell me that I'm showing some papers to the divorce, you know, like papers that was in the divorce. I never showed any court papers I of, of the divorce. I never did. I showed what I found on the website that mentioned the divorce. Now, yes, I showed that. But anything that was stamped with a court, whatever on it, I never took that and showed that information. So if I'm talking to Essie Berry and I'm talking to Mary Harvey and Geneva is doing her own research, because can't nobody just tell me anything and I just take mm -hmm. that information and put it on YouTube because I'm old school. Don't you remember like back in the day when we had to do book reports and we had to show where our references came sources. from? Well, that's I'm how sources. I am right now, but I do that in video form. So I show where all of my information came from. So if I'm sitting up here doing research, Steve Harvey, and everything that I'm showing is validating what Essie and Mary is saying, then, then, then I can talk about it then. I'm not saying nothing wrong. So all I did was show that information that they sent me talking about a gag order notice. I didn't do nothing but make a video showing that because you're not going to intimidate me for telling the truth. I'm not lying here. So yeah, that, that's basically how that went. They tried to intimidate, but it did not work. And uh, this again is why she is a honorary straight shooter. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so now you have a gag order. Your channel is growing pretty rapidly at this point, I'm sure, because you are becoming the number one source of information about a megastar. Mm. Internally, how are you feeling? Is there ever a time where you're nervous or scared because now maybe you have <laughs> to get an attorney to find mm. out exactly what your rights are? Mm -mm. No, I no. wasn't nervous or scared about that. I think <laughs> what ended up happening in the midst of that whole thing is that I had noticed that there was, me and Essie had noticed that there had been um, a few YouTube channels that were made that were like um, trying to stalk us or harass us or intimidate us based on the Steve Harvey thing. Now, that's what started becoming interesting, that it was specific YouTube channels that was made to try to intimidate us 
to not talk about Steve Harvey anymore. And these channels um, went on for years. To, to my knowledge, I think they're still there, but I, you know, at the beginning, when you're first starting off on YouTube, you kind of engage in the nonsense, maybe check in to see if people are talking about you. But that didn't last too long for me because you're not going to be messing with my mental. So then I stopped paying attention to whatever they were saying and just continued to do my thing. But that is the thing that was like, hmm, that's interesting. But nothing as far as Steve Harvey, me worrying about do I need to get a, an attorney and blah, 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 blah. At, 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 if, if anything, I was kind of welcoming you know, like, oh, OK, well, you feel like that. I'm Because Mary says she ain't got no problem saying what she got to say. SC don't have a problem with telling everything that had happened. So if you had, I mean, so, hey, bring it, bring it. So, yeah, that, that's how I felt about that. No, I wasn't intimidated. So um, I, I want to say this much. When we do these type of stories, for me personally, what got me interested was because I had heard things regarding Marjorie but never really like looked into it. And then okay. when Tasha K did her interview with, well, actually, no, I had started following Jimmy Townsend a while back because he said he was going to have a book and I do book clubs. And I started hearing like all of these really, really crazy rumors about Marjorie. And the way that my mind works is some of the stuff I'm sure is true, but I want to find out what I want to actually authenticate what, what people say. So when people ask, how did I get started in this? It really was that rumor about Marjorie having two babies with two cousins. Mm. That was like the thing. And I was like, that's pretty disturbing. And if I can figure out a way to, you know, counter that, if it's not true, I would. And the first video that I did on this was that Marjorie had babies by two cousins because that was out there. Mm. And when I started deep diving in, to Jimmy, I found out that that was not true. Jimmy alleged that she had dated two cousins who were allegedly drug dealers, but they were, um, he, she did not have a baby with him and Donnell, making them cousins and their, their children, brothers and sisters and cousins. So that's how I got started on it. Now that Tasha K has done this interview, there are a lot of questions that, um, people still have mm -hmm. people don't know and i like to get to like the heart of things so that's where i got started on it okay. geneva came up, geneva came up because every time i researched something on steve geneva would come up i'm not really too familiar with essie um but her name also comes up and i just like to give other people the ability to speak their truth so when I saw um, Mary's interviews, it tugged at my heartstrings. Yeah. And I likened it to your situation because you two are, you know, two women moving along. And now you have somebody very powerful who's telling you, stop speaking. Mm -hmm. And Geneva's not the type of lady to stop speaking. I think Mary has. I think Mary eventually went to jail for talking. Mm -hmm. Two times. I did not know that. So can you do you have any information on that? Can you tell us why she went to jail? You know what, people? Um, it whatever it was, I'm, I'm telling you. Look, let me tell you something. <laughs> let me let me let me say this before I re respond to that. Essie Berry, uh, make it make sense, Mims. I know you do not know Essie Berry like that, but I'm telling you. Essie, she remembers everything. She remembers every date. She remembers every detail. Every time I forget something. She never forgets. Now, I'm pretty sure if she was up here, she'd be like, well, she had went to jail for this and I had called the called the judge and the blase de de boo Whatever it was, it had something to do with, with Essie and her talking and Steve Harvey not wanting her to talk. She, uh, Mary, Mary didn't hit anybody. She didn't do anything like, like she, she had rammed her car into anything. She had destroyed property. That's not what she did. Mary was trying to talk about what was going on with her. She said, my husband is a celebrity. Everybody knows him, but don't nobody hear, hear what I'm saying. Don't nobody know what happened to me. I want to speak my truth. I want to do some interviews. I want to say what happened. And because she was doing that, 
and she was talking to Essie Barry and Essie wasn't scared. Essie was making video after video after video after video, showing and saying everything. He threw her in jail those times, two times. And one time, if I'm not mistaken, it was around New Year's and he had her sitting in jail for a month, people, a whole month. Now, why would he do that? Why would he do that? Huh? Why was it so important for her not to talk? Because she was talking big facts. He didn't want her to tell that Marjorie was in the picture. Marjorie was saying the stuff, not when he making the story seem as if, no, ladies, I know everything about relationships. That's why I have written these books, because you need to listen to me. And no, I know how to do relationships. First, you get out of the relationship and you make sure you're totally out of there. Then you get into a new one and start your new life. That's not what happened. And Mary wanted to, Mary and Essie wanted to make it known. And he didn't like it, so he threw it in jail those times. So yeah, and, I'm, and, and the real information on that, the breakdown of that is in the video that I did, Steve Harvey and his Steve Harvey and his side chicks. Yeah, Steve Harvey and his side chicks. That breaks all of that down. So um we got a super chat <laughs> uplifting. She says, what's going on here? Whose business we in this time? <laughs> Technically, this is Geneva's business because she received the gag order for discussing some of these things. I I want to say this. There have been people who have reached out to me in the background who talk about a lot of the good things that Steve Harvey does. On this channel, we will never take anyone's accolades, like Nini would say. The good work that somebody does does not necessarily mean that people who were affected by this person should not have a voice. You know what I mean? It's very important to know that everybody deserves to have a voice on all sides. Um, for Steve, he has a megaphone because he has such a large platform and such a substantial reach that, for example, I just saw an interview. I probably will review this with my um, with my subscribers. It was an interview that Tom Joyner did with Mary, and I was cringing through the whole interview because he actually invited her on the interview, but it felt like he invited her in order to stifle the things she was saying. And you know, on this channel, we don't necessarily have to interview the celebrity. We interview the people who are affected or impacted who also have a story to tell. Um, I interviewed um, Peters. I interviewed Peters, Peter Thomas's ex-girlfriend. Oh, that's cool. She had a story to tell. She was mentioned on Potomac. I interviewed Tamika and Latasha Scott's father. And people thought that interview was going to be messy, but really it was a, re it was a full-bodied interview to get to the heart of what was going on in the family. It is what it is. That's good. Um, that's good. And, and that's, that's good. Can I say something about the Steve Harvey thing too? Because for all of the going against Steve Harvey, <laughs> making the videos that I have made about Steve Harvey, just me being honest, based on the research that I've done and talking to Mary and blah, blah, blah. What I can say is, Based on hearing some things that I've read about Mary and talking to Mary and listening to what Essie had to say about Mary, who've known her for a long time, I understand why Steve Harvey wanted to get out of that marriage. I completely understand why he wanted to move on. I feel like that at some point, even in the marriage, before Steve had, you know, left off yet, um, she had got kind of weak. I mean, she just seems very weak minded. Just like maybe she was sitting in, the, I mean, like maybe she was depressed. Maybe Steve had been cheating on her. Some other things was going on with Mary. You know, not to say that Mary don't have her own back issues and stuff too. But so I'm not saying that it was totally Steve Harvey in that relationship that made that relationship not work. I'm, 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 I'm almost positive Mary has some things to do with it too. But when it came to the ending of the relationship, the ending of the marriage, I just don't think that he handled that correctly. And this whole situation with Winton and how Winton, you know, was put against his mom and ain't no telling what they said about said about Mary to the son. And he's over there with Marjorie and Marjorie acting like she his new mom. And that whole situation, I thought that was pretty messed up. And I felt sorry for Mary listening to her discuss that. 
It just felt like that when it was time that she could have really been there for Winston to fight for him, she was broken. I don't know if Steve Harvey has stumped her down. Life in general had just stumped her down, but she just seemed very broken and weak. So, yeah. I hear you. Um, I did see I did see on the Steve show where like you you watch these things and a lot of times what happens is you take it for face value. So when I saw on on Steve's show, he was praising Marjorie for really turning Winton around in the sense that, you know, his grades weren't great and all that. And then he became like an honor roll student. And when you see that, you're like, great, you know, like a, a blended family and you were really helping, you know, but then I didn't even know about the Mary Harvey situation. So it, it adds an extra element, texture to the story because now she has to see on television, her son is being talked about as if he was not a great student. And then you're saying your new wife is would really put him in a place to get A's and B's. It just, it does tug at my heartstrings. I don't know Mary personally. Um, if she ever wanted to interview, you know, I would actually have to talk to my attorney first and, and make sure that, you know, she could say things. But my interview with her would be more like, you know, what what did it feel like being a mother and then having to see this play out so publicly and then not feeling like you had a voice in the situation? I mean, because everything is always going to be so shiny and new and bright because Steve is, you know, he's a, like a motivational speaker. He's beloved in the industry. But they, there's always a backstory, people, and that's really what I want to get into. I really want to like talk to people and see where were you at this moment. And if you're saying you felt like or she admitted to being depressed, add that element to it. Now, the stuff that I get is all specifically from what people have said in interviews. So when I watched Steve on the interview with Club, uh, on Club Shay Shay, Shannon Sharp, he said or he alluded to that seven years of his tax documents were like defrauded and they, he was paying his tax bill, but somehow or another it was not getting paid, but the money was taken from the account. Some lady found a box full of stuff that had all these receipts where he supposedly had paid, but had not. Then he said um, he did not want to name the person, but you know, they had all the money and it, in my opinion, it alluded to the oh. ex-wife. But when I watched the ex-wife talk about it, she said that she was getting $40,000 a month. And I think that only lasted, I think she said either six to nine months. And that happened four years after her divorce. So in those situations, that's what we do. We pull stuff and then we ask the question, well, who's telling the truth in this situation? Mm -hmm. That's what we do around here. Had you heard any of that? Did you watch um, the Shannon Sharp interview? I'll ask you that. No, I did not watch it because I really don't want to hear anything that Steve Harvey talking about. I feel like that I didn't did enough <laughs> research on him. I didn't did research on him. I didn't did research on his ancestry. Like, I really don't know what else more there is unless somebody finna come out with something new. So, no, I didn't pay any attention to that interview. Um, you know what? I believe that there's some ring of truth to that because Steve Harvey wasn't really handling his own stuff like other people was handling his stuff. He had his secretaries, uh, like what was old girl name? I can't remember. Megan. He had a secretary, Megan. He had his attorneys and stuff. So I mean, like, I mean, right. And and then I told you the situation, right? And not only that, Mary came on when she did that interview with me. What was it last year or whatever? where she talked about old girl from um, House of Pain, uh, Miss Ella from the House of Pain, from Tyler Perry's House of Pain, being her assistant at one point. And, and Mary was giving, um, I, I forgot the lady's real name, she's gonna call her Miss Ella, was giving Miss Ella her credit card. And Miss Ella was handling finances and stuff. So not Mary, not Steve, Mary's assistant, Ma Ma Mary's. Is it I'm Cassie? Oh, yeah. So Cassie you gotta, Davis. You gotta your finances like that, anything can happen when it comes to taxes. You got to be on it. You got to be on it. So I believe so, that. 
Geneva, Geneva has agreed. Geneva has agreed to also be on Mim's YouTube tips. We're gonna. She has like an additional story that she was telling me, and I, I don't even think she realized how inspiring that story could be for future content creators. So she will be on on Mim's YouTube tips with that story. So we'll leave that there. But to this book, Geneva is the one and only person who has this book. So. We're going to do um, a couple of juicy excerpts where um, she, I believe, Terry, the alleged mistress, has now kind of caught wind of Marjorie Harvey. So uh, I'm really excited about that. This lady has a voice for radio. When I'm listening to her audio book, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm, the way that she speaks, the way that she puts inflection on certain words, she's really good at this, guys. Uh, thank you so much, Mims. I really do appreciate that. I'm trying to figure out, so without reading whatever, but I want you, especially if you have never heard me read this book before, you haven't listened to my book reads, I want to give you a little something so then you can feel like, you know what, I think I want to listen to the rest of this book because it's very interesting. If you don't know anything about this book, this is Steve Harvey, Mistress of Nine Years, Terry Smith. Terry Smith tried to write this book. Here she go right here. It says, in bookstores, October 1st, 2004. So that lets you know when this book was written, when she expected it to go inside stores. Now, let me just tell you this right quick. So when she had wrote this book, she had already started getting it out there. She had a publishing house and everything. And Wendy Williams at the time had got some information about the book. Wendy Williams had shot it out, Terry Smith, and the book on the radio station. Steve Harvey attorneys and stuff had, Steve Harvey and his attorneys had heard that. Because at this time, they had broken up. And Terry said she hadn't heard from Steve in a few years. And based on reading this book, when you get to the end of the book, you kind of find out how their relationship ended. So then, okay, okay, okay. So then page six, I don't even know if you heard about page six media publication. Mm -hmm. They had heard about the book too. Reached out to Terry Smith, but uh, uh, Steve Harvey attorney, Ricky Anderson said, not today, people. Contacted Terry Smith and said, you know what, Terry? How about we meet up? And uh, Steve want to meet with you. Now, she was reluctant because she hadn't heard from Steve in a little bit. She was like, do I want to meet up with this man? But I think she was still in love with him, especially based off how their relationship ended. And she went and met with him. They had some words or whatever. She ended up signing the contract, getting a hundred and some thousand. I guess Steve Harvey and his attorneys made it seem like she would still be able to put her book out there and make a movie about this and do other book, uh, uh, books that she wanted to do. That didn't happen. And then that's when she then went and tried to sue Steve Harvey. And I had gave that information and told um, Mims about that. I can also put the link to those court documents on Geneva's Closet Community um, page. If you want to click on there and read it yourself, you ain't got to take my word for it. You can click on the court document, click on the link and go read the court documents for yourself. So this is the book that, that Steve Harvey and his attorney stopped from coming out. Stop it. That's why if you try to look it up, you ain't going to find it. I had a hard enough time trying to find it. But this is the book. What men will Thank lie, what the truth will do, the king, his queen, and the other woman. Um. So it's men will, men will lie when the truth will do, the king, the queen, and his other woman. The king, uh, the king, his queen, and his other woman. Oh, and his other woman. Mm -hmm. That's how uh, that so goes. Go Thank ahead, you man. so much, Ebony Dixon. I appreciate the super chat. We have like about 800 people in here. Let's get the like count to at least like 500, y'all. We're giving you exclusive. Somebody who actually got it, a gag order. <laughs> um, there was there was one other thing that I wanted to mention before. Oh, so in covering this story, if you're new to my channel, I'm shady, but I'm fair. I'm known around YouTube now as shady, but fair. And even when I was reviewing what Jimmy had said about Marjorie, you had something to say? Can you give me one minute? One minute while, while you while you talk, just give me one second. Okay. So I got a little bit of flack because people felt like I was defending Marjorie. Here's the thing. Marjorie has not come out and said anything regarding any of the allegations. So when I report stories, it's very important that I give a counter to what is being said. It doesn't mean that I didn't believe Mr. Townsend. It just means that 
we got to have full body conversations. And that means countering if the other party has not responded. So I thought that was important that you guys know that if you are new to my channel, I will always try my best to be fair. Even talking to Geneva is giving another side because Steve just did this interview with Shannon Sharp and it was, I think, close to 4 million views. If you have 4 million views, that is definitely going to counter whatever Jimmy has said regarding anything involving Steve and Marjorie on the Tasha K interview and all the other interviews he's been doing. So it's important, even if you're a new content creator, always do your best to show all sides. That way, when people come back, all parties involved know that you did your best to report it as fair as possible. Geneva can tell you. Absolute Mundo. And while I was gone from a distance, I heard you say Jim Townsend. And I brought this up on my phone because I wanted to um, read this right quick. This was because I have been corresponding a little bit with Jim Townsend um, after he got out of jail and I would start doing these movies. And, I mean, doing these movies. And I started doing these videos or whatever. So this, this, this is dated for April 23rd, 2021. So I write to Jim Townsend. I write to Jim Townsend. I say, hey, Jimmy, how are you? I hope great. I've done a series of videos on Steve, and I've noticed people asking about you and your book. What's going on with your book? The people want to hear from you, Jimmy. And Jimmy responds right back. He says, like, oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy responds right back. And he says, April 23rd, 2021. Hi, Geneva. I know people are frustrated as hell with me about all the hype I built up about my book and never delivered. I met, I met so much opposition from my kids by Marjorie against me writing the book. It sent me into, into, into a whirlwind of depression and uncertainty. Remember, I was also going through a transition back into society after being incarcerated for 26 years. I just recently made up, made up my mind to edit the old and add all the new unbelievable post-prison events that happened to me. After having said all that, I just recently tested positive for COVID, so I'm on quarantine, but just can't concentrate on nothing but recovery. Also, I'm looking for a reputable ghostwriter. So that's what he was saying, that his kids was coming at him. His two older children were coming at him based on whatever Marjorie was saying, was putting in their ear about getting him to not write that book. So he was he, he had got depressed and he, he wanted to be with his kids. He wanted to be with his children and his grandkids. And that's why I think it has been some years since he has written this book. And I have heard a few people say, that he scorned or he upset. Look, the man spent 26 years in jail. <laughs> she got pregnant by his cousin, for God's grief's sake. Let that man tell his story. I mean, her and her husband always trying to suck people not his from getting their books out and speaking their truth. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Not his, not his cousin. Oh, not his cousin? No, it was not It was not his cousin. Oh, it okay. Was, well, he then, said that you it know was what? two other that people in the... Stand. Two other people in the syndicate. He said that mm. two of his underlings were cousins that he didn't technically even really knew, know them, but he knew that they were, you know, worked for him or had okay. some connection to him. And that she dated sense. one and then eventually dated the other. And now he's alleging that she gave him, she gave the new husband his contacts. So that's how that works. You know but, what? Um, thank you for clarifying. Thank you for clarifying that for me, ma'am. Because I did a video last year that was called "Who Is Marjorie Harvey's Daddy?" Okay, and I had did my research about Donnell Woods. Not only did I show oh, a picture Lord of Donnell Lord. Woods, I showed his brothers, the family, because his brothers and stuff is currently in prison right now for doing mm -hmm. another drug bust, in addition to the one that they had done back in the day when Donnell Woods first went to jail. And based on my research, I didn't see anything about them being cousins. And I specifically remember saying that in the video that I don't see anything about them being cousins. Maybe they are, but I don't see it. But people were like, they're cousins, they're cousins. So I thought that Jim, Jim had came out just during this interview now and said mm -hmm. that they were cousins, but you're saying that no, we didn't. So, okay, so then that, that means I was right. <laughs> yeah, he, he clarified that. I mean, at the... 
It's a whole lot. I, I like I said, I like to go through all of it. And even though I feel like after watching all these interviews, he's like what you would call probably in the 70s, 80s, like a smooth cat. He he parses his words very carefully. He never like raises his voice. In fact, whenever I play some of his interviews, people are like, can you turn it up? Can you turn up the volume? There is something about the way that he delivers what he's saying that will pull you in. But because Marjorie and Steve or Marjorie specifically has not said anything, I always cover the story with this is what he said. But and, you know, even down to him meeting Marjorie when he when she was 18, I found out that, you know. Some people feel like 18, you know, that's consent. You're doing what you want. She knew what she was wanting. People said she was, you know, had her hot pants, all that kind of stuff. But the way I look at it is. 18, you're still pretty impressionable. He was 14 years her senior. I always go what the person said and real life experience. At the end of the day, he's a smooth cat. I feel like he deserves to tell his story. But the other part of that story is you were very proud to say that you were the one that brought, um, I can't say certain words on here. You brought that to a community. So it's always like a full bodied story on the Make It Make Sense channel. No, 14 years her senior. People, she wasn't 14, she was 18, and he was 32 and married when he met Marjorie. And again, yeah. he did not tell her he was married, and then he chose her over his wife, who eventually, he said, developed a habit and came to an early demise. And he says oh, he still regrets really? that to the day. Those are the kind of stuff what? that I love to like get into. Like, wow. you did have regrets. He doesn't regret having his children because he is very concerned with having a relationship with them now. But mm. yeah, wow, that's, that's sad. I didn't know that. Wow. So mm. okay, are we are we? Did you get the excerpts? Yep, I did, and and then I accidentally took my papers. I was switching. I didn't find. Yeah, he did say Steve has soup coolers. I was like, oh, he he was clowning in that interview. <laughs> yeah, I think he, I have it. Um, Oh guys, yeah, we got about nine. We got about nine hundred people in here. I don't even think we don't even have four hundred likes. Let's get that like count to six hundred. That's le that lets YouTube know that we are here and we're having a good time with Miss Geneva. I have dropped your link, Geneva, as well. Oh, thank you so much, ma'ams. I appreciate that. Uh, Thins eight men, creams of the creams, creams of the creams. I'm just trying to figure out how to read it so I'm not reading the whole thing. I can read one part and then jump to the next part and then get into the part you that have, I feel like. Do you, you have, have, the have the part? Do you have the part? Well, I'm about to read the part the, where, where she meets Marjorie. Can you start with the back of the book? You want me to start with the back of the book? Just like the back where she kind of explains herself. Okay. Okay. Can can I read the book? Geneva is the only person in the world with this book, y'all. I'm the only person, so I have been not to not to go into, but I have been looking for this book for a minute, and I couldn't find it. And then I just happened to find it the other year. Um, the back of the book says, "Here we go, right here. There we go, right there." It says, "Men will lie when the truth will do." The king, his queen, and the other woman, Terry Smith, author says, "Carry strong." Okay, because she changed the names. The names, some of the names sound almost the same because she called Steve Harvey Stephane Harvell. Okay, it says Carrie Strong, Terry Smith, Carrie Strong. Carrie Strong gave up 10 years of her life to serve the sexual whims of comedian Stephane Harvell. He treated her like royalty, but he chose her castle, her robes, and her friends. When it came to his coronation, he took a wife to be his queen and left Carrie to the to be the other woman. He had it all, but he left her with nothing except the journals where she recorded every lie he told her before there was fame. Back then, it was a different hustle for him. Just small clubs with a capacity of 300 at most. But he made it. He made it big. I had no idea back then that I was getting on a roller coaster ride for what would never stop, or that the next 10 years would be filled with joy, lies, love, infidelity, and pain. Because he was what he was. When he was in need, I was <laughs> in need to stand. 
that no conditions, love was what bonded us together. I gave, he took. I think he actually cared in a strange kind of way, but it was a twisted love, betrayed. After 10 years of playing his game, we made magic, but where there's magic, there's tricks. I should have known that then, but I didn't. All I knew was the touch of the magician. He bought me lock, stock, barrel, and self-respect. When he stopped paying, I started with my soul, alone, abandoned, and on the street. I clawed my way back to freedom. And yeah, that's what the book is about, people. That's the, the, There you go. <laughs> I am over here cackling, y'all. Like this, <laughs> she is hilarious. So this is the author Terry. She's a very, you know, pretty lady. Um, Geneva's rendition of Terry. Now, if I ever do talk to Terry, I'm gonna be expecting her to sound like Geneva. <laughs> the, <laughs> the people in the comments are loving it. Y'all love it enough to like the video. We're giving you guys some content, some laughs today. It's not anything that's that's serious or deep. We're only talking about what is already out there. We got 900 in the chat. Let's get to at least like 600 likes. We're giving y'all a show today. <laughs> yes, Geneva's a character. People. I told yes, you. Okay, well, I'm ready if you want me to be ready. I'm ready. Okay, okay, I'm ready. So, oh, really, really quickly. We got some super chats. Canillo's okay. TV says, thank you. Um, coming through to show some support to my friend, Shady But Fair, LOL. That's what we got to be around here. We we catch some heat sometimes, but we definitely are Shady But Fair. Um, Succeeding 2 says, Steve had a nine-year mistress. Not fair. Call, call weak. Oh, maybe they're talking about um, the, what you said about Mary. Um, Mary. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know all the ins and outs with that, but um, I think Succeeding is trying to say because Steve had a nine year mistress and Mary found out, because I believe Mary said the woman sent her an actual letter, it yes. probably played into what was already going on with Mary. And mm -hmm. that's why I would love to interview her because at the time she found out that she was married, uh, that he was already married, what does that do to your psyche? Because then you choose to stay and the allegations that I heard were the first wife found out about Mary specifically, not Terry, and she was pregnant. And that's what really caused the divorce. And I believe they got divorced in 94 and then Mary married him in 96. So all these things, the money, the fast lifestyle, all of the assistance, everything moved really fast. And we don't know how that technically affected Mary's psyche. Thank you succeeding for the super chat. Um, um, go ahead and jump in Geneva. Okay. Um, I'm going to read just a little bit of, a bit of this part so you can get just a tad bit of a back on what I'm about to say. It's this no, part she did not date. She did not date Steve. She oh, hell no. Somebody... <laughs> no, Savannah, no. Why would Savannah? No, I would never. <laughs> no. Uh-uh. Steve ain't thinking about me. He, 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 he probably wish I'd go away, Savannah. No, he don't want to date me. He want me to go away. So, Yeah. <laughs> This part, this um, chapter is called Checking Out the Competition. This is the part where Terry describes her interaction with meeting Marjorie Harvey the first time she met her. It says, one Thursday during the spring of 1995. So if Mimson gave you a timeline, I'm giving you one too, okay? One Thursday during the spring of 1995, my phone rang. Hello, thank you for calling Executive Concierge. How may I help you? Hello, can I speak to Carrie? When I glanced at the number on the call display screen and didn't recognize the area code, I thought that it might be Stefan calling from somewhere on the road, but it was a female voice. We dealt with mostly male executives, which always meant extra caution when answering personal calls from ladies. So that's the part that I met. So Terry, and so Terry decides to meet Carrie. Terry Smith decides to meet with the lady who ends up being Marjorie. And that's what part I'm about to get into now. And it's so now they're sitting at dinner because Carrie did not want to meet her. 
But she said, she was like, okay, this lady's a little persistent. Okay, well, I'm going to meet you. So then they end up meeting at dinner the next day. And then this is how it goes. I Also, had also, also really, really quickly, because I, okay. I listened to Geneva's, I listened to Geneva's live. Just to give you guys backstory, not only did she call Terry, allegedly, she also said to Terry, uh, Steve told me to reach out to you. Steve yes. was the one who wanted me to get information from you. Steve yes. was the one who um, really wants you to t break down your business for me because allegedly Steve was the one who helped Terry set up her business. I'm sorry, Stefan was the one that helped Terry set up her business. <laughs> so now you have a better understanding. She's yes. saying that typically she wouldn't be getting calls from women. Now she's getting a call from a woman who knows who she is and connects her to Steve. That's why this was something that was kind of off-putting to her, like, who is this lady? Yeah. Just to set the scene. And I can read okay. a little bit of that, because it's right here. When she answers the phone, Carrie, my name is Sandra. So this is Marjorie's name in this book, Sandra. Carrie, my name is Sandra, and I'm a good friend of Stefan Harvell. He mentions you and your company and suggested I give you a call. Oh, he did? I pushed away a sheaf of letters that my sister had gave me. That was nice of him. Just what is it that I can do for you? Oh. She breathed. Stefan and I were talking about things that he thought I might be good at. He told me about your company and what you do. He said you started a concierge business for celebrities and VIPs. You know, she giggled, very posh. Well, he's really been, he, he, he's really been trying to help me find a career. And I just knew from his eyes when he was talking about you that he was really proud of what you've done. And well, maybe I could try that too. He told me he even came up with the name of your company, Executive Concierge Inc. He said you call it ECI for short. Sandra, do you live here in Atlanta? I put a smile in my voice, even if one made, even if one never made it to my lips. Oh no, I live in Washington, DC. I would like to learn more about your business because I really need to make some things change in my life. Now that's how that went. That's how that went. So then um, Carrie ended up being like, okay, well then I guess we can meet up tomorrow because she was very persistent. So they met up the next day over dinner. And this is what I'm getting into now. So now Carrie is talking. Terry Smith is talking. I had paused just for a moment before switching from identifying your market to marketing your company. When she blurted out, so tell me, how long have you known Stefan? For, for several years now, I responded, spreading some brochures in front of her. How did you two meet? Here in Atlanta? No, 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 no. How did you two meet? Here in Atlanta, right here in Atlanta, I nodded my head in the direction of the window. She leaned forward a little bit. Mm, he speaks very highly of you. I can tell by the look on his face when he talks about you that he really likes you. He gets this glassy stare as if he envisions you when he's talking. I tried blowing her off with an, oh, really? Even if she wasn't a stranger to Stefan, I'm not comfortable talking to anyone about our relationship. But I must admit that this sister got my cur curiosity up. It was plain that the business session was a bust. I gathered up my papers and laid them on top of my briefcase. I had told it along. So, Sandra, are you married? No, I'm not married anymore. But I have two kids. Two kids? I wasn't prepared for that response. Two kids? What? A boy, a girl, or what? Yes, a boy and a girl. Stefan loves my daughter. He thinks it's great that my kids attend the same private school as the mayor's kids. Just for a moment. Her face lit up with what looked like a genuine smile. Uh-huh. Since you don't work then, I guess your ex-husband really helps you out with the kids. I mean, financially and all. She had me playing her game now. Make her uneasy. Make her doubt Stefan. Was she trying to make me think he was paying for her kids' tuition? Well, she wasn't the only one on a fixed fishing expedition. She said, I sort of um, inherited my money from my ex-husband by default. He got 25 years for embezzlement and um, he's been in jail for the last three years. She waved a manicured hand lazily. Sandra was on her third martini, drowned, not stirred, and, and um, some of her veneer was slipping. She amazed me. She really did. 
as beautiful as she was, I couldn't understand Stefan's interest in her. I'm certain that beauty alone is something that he would never jeopardize his career for, much less what he have going. But I am certain there is something going on here. But what beats me? He's so good at lying and tricks that the few times I've questioned him about anything, I have never been able to watch him. I have never been able to catch him out. It had um, something to do with drugs. She went on with a dreamy smile. They said it was the largest drug bust that Washington has ever had. To keep my thoughts from showing on my face, I took a sip of my water. What the hell was this bitch up to? Our relationship was rocky and destructive. <laughs> anyway, but at least my home is paid off. So I'm going to use that. Fairly good financial planner. I planted my tongue firmly in my cheek. Oh, Carrie, she laughed. <laughs> no, everything that I have was paid for in cash. My homes, cars, furs, and jewelry. You know, the really nice things. I have this $1,500 watch that I showed Stefan when he was over at my house. He couldn't believe all the jewelry that I owned. Oh, crap. We were back to the wide-eyed Barbie now. Why didn't she just bring me her tax return to show what she was worth? Or did she show that to Stefan too? What was this, what was she trying to buy? Information from me or something better from him? He had been in her house. She made a point of letting me know that. Does she want me to assume that something is going on between her and Stefan? Or is she confirming that it is? She was trying awful hard to say something, but I couldn't quite figure out what it was. And see, if you want to hear the rest, people, you got to go listen to the book, read. <laughs> Literally, you have me dying. Like, Sorry for the mistakes, people. I, I, I had a few mistakes in there. Sorry for that. But yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, so... Basically, what had happened was Terry alleges that Marjorie came up to her sometime in the 90s. When I did my timeline, I told you guys that Steve, and I just found this out, I, he said the 80s, but he was very specific on another interview. He met Marjorie in 88. Marjorie was still very much married to Jimmy because she had a baby by him in 91. Steve was very much still married to Marsha because Marsha had a baby by Steve in 1991. If Terry's timeline is correct. That means that during the 90s, Marjorie also had some form of a connection or interaction with Steve. Steve says he met her in 88. They dated. He did not um, actually speak to her again until 2006. Or he said the day after he got divorced. So <laughs> y'all can do with that timeline the way that you know you want. But Terry's book um, definitely sheds light on new elements to the story, which is why it's still a story. The name of the, Mace, you're not going to find it. The name of the book is Men Lie When the Truth Will Do. And the only way you'll hear it is on Geneva's channel. <laughs> but yeah, it adds another element to the story because she says that this woman, Marjorie, allegedly was still in Steve's life in the 90s. So the way that it's all wrapped <laughs> up in a nice package on his show is that you know, we did this in the 80s. We all made our mistakes. It was official in 2006. And y'all do with that as you may. We can only give you the timelines based on the people who were there. None of this stuff is made up. It's literally what has been said in interviews. I played an interview. I played one of the things that they said on my show. So they're like, Mims, how, what, they like to find out how my wheels turn. I saw this interview where Marjorie was like, you know, we met in the comedy club. He stopped the show and he just said very simply, oh, I'm going to marry you one day. And all the audience clapped and said, ah, and I'm like sitting there like, well, how many of y'all are wives or husbands? Because if you were married and you walk into a comedy club and a comedian stops and says, I'm going to marry you one day and then you start dating, it's not something to clap about. It's not this. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That's you know, but like I said, I always do still give Steve his accolades and stuff like that. But it's important to have other sides to the story to get like a full story. Yeah. But um, 
What did you take from it? What do you think specifically about Terry's relationship with Stefan <coughs> or Harvell or whatever? I mean, she knew he was messing with other women. I mean, in the book, when you read the book, you end up feeling sorry for her hearing all the things that she went through. And when you get to the end of the book and you find out how Steve Harvey treated her at the end of the book, you're like, oh, my God, he just totally played her, especially after you realize that they've been in a relationship for nine years. So, yeah, you feel sorry for her for just that reason, just for her, for for how he treated her. You feel sorry for her. I mean, I guess because she wasn't strong enough to fight back you know, to not deal with that, to get out of that relationship. And okay, so the first, when she first met him, Steve Harvey made it seem like he was getting a divorce from Marsha, like him and Marsha were separated. She didn't necessarily know that maybe he was still sleeping with Marsha, but based on the book, you know that she knows that he was messing around with other women, that he had cheated on her with other women. She ended up finding out about Mary. You know that he's married to Mary, but you're sitting up there listening to him say that he's going to leave. But he never leaves. Just like we hear that all the time. Oh, I'm going to leave my wife. I'm going to leave my wife. So she was one of those ones. Oh, he is. And then he never left. And then she ended up finding out that Mary was pregnant and she still stayed. Here's so, the thing, though. Um, yeah, I don't know. She got played, too. Here's it's, the thing, Geneva. They, they met in 91. Mm -hmm. Marsha, his, his actual first wife, had a baby in 91. Even though there wasn't Google, you can still find out the things that you want to find out. You can still find out if there's a divorce decree. She was a business owner at one point. She said that her business did very well. If you wanted to hire somebody to find out, you can. Um, mm -hmm. Then yeah. once he married Mary, that's also public record because the relationship was nine years. So she stayed with him through his second marriage. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to say, mm -hmm. yes. Steve is the one who's cheating, but these women did technically know that they were the mistress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's how you have conversations because people do. People cheat every day. People get divorced, all this kind of stuff. People give with people when they're telling them. They're stringing them along. Oh, we're going to get what? a divorce. I believe, you know what, like this is just keeping it real. This is just keeping it real. Sometimes I believe, especially when it comes to celebrities or women dealing with celebrities with a lot of money, I think that they tolerate a lot of stuff because of that money. I believe that that's partial reason maybe why Mary stayed so long. I believe that that's reason why Terry kept dealing with the stuff that she was dealing with. Terry liked some of the accolades, some of the benefits that came with dating Steve Harvey, even though that they wasn't married. She speaks of it in the book. And I believe the same thing with Marjorie. I mean, Marjorie sat there and came and met up with the woman that you know is Steve is the glassy ad, glossy ad when he talking about, but you like Steve too. So you know he messing with other people. So why did you stay? I'm pretty sure. And you know, in, in the book, it's you, you can tell that Marjorie had her own stuff, but it but it wasn't the the, the money that Steve was about to get. So I believe right. that she stayed and dealt with stuff because of his money, you know. And like, I'm telling you, when you read the book, if you haven't read it, Steve has a type. He has a type of woman, and I believe that Marjorie played on that type of woman that Steve liked. Do I think that she got cheated on? Yeah, I think she got cheated on, too, because I think that he has a type and whatever. Steve has a backstory of issues that he had with his mom and stuff. I mean, there's a whole story there and why he do the things and why he treated women the way that he treated women. But, yeah, yeah, I think that they partially dealt with a lot of that because of money. Um, somebody said they saw the interview and nobody gave specifics on when they got married. If you have not checked out my video where I actually go through the full timeline, I use all the information that is out there. Now, there is no specific date of when Jimmy and Marjorie got married. However, um, they both acknowledge or Jimmy acknowledged that she divorced him four years after he became incarcerated. So that gives you the timeline. If he was incarcerated around 91, that means that they got divorced in 95. Somebody else had a question. Um, they said Mary, Mary did not know. Mary did not know. Steve, she was with him living in a duplex um, with him for a while. 
his mom calls one day and she's like, hey, mom, I, we've been talking about getting married. And the mom is the one that says you can't marry him because he's already married. Mm -hmm. So then after she found that out, she did choose to stay. But at a certain point, I don't think any of the women involved knew that Steve was married, including Marjorie. I don't think he told any of them. And in fact, he dated Marjorie until he got homeless. Once he was homeless, he said that's when he left Marjorie alone because he didn't want her to find out he was homeless. So maybe even back Marjorie then, Steve or Marcia, knew Marjorie. He, he did when what? He, he dated her. Oh, you're talking about at the beginning. Yeah, he dated Marjorie and then he became homeless. He left Marjorie alone because he did not want her to find out that he was homeless. So these are all things that, pe that these people have said in interviews yes, and just ads. Lord Jesus. I'm telling y'all, y'all gonna have to watch that video, Steve Harvey and his sad chicks, because Mary said he wasn't even homeless. That's why I think Steve Harvey is deciding on writing this book, because I did see that the other day scrolling on YouTube that he supposed to be writing some book or whatever. And I found that really interesting. I said that's because Mary done sat here and broke certain things down on a timeline and how things actually went and calling him a liar on a lot of stuff, saying that he wasn't homeless and sleeping in his car. Mary said none of that was true. Mary, I, I mean, but that's in that interview that I just did with Mary. So I don't know, Steve Harvey and his, that Marjorie didn't date me because I was homeless and sleeping in the car. This man makes up stuff to make his story sound, sound good. But it's like so many articles out there that you can read, just like Mims did, and put everything together and be like, you know, and, and then you listen to what Mary's saying and you like, mm. I mean, because Mary feels like the by the time St Marjorie really came along, Steve had money. I guess I, I, I forgot the dates. It's been so long. I forgot the dates. Go ahead. Say that, say that one more time. I said What'd Mary say? feels like that by the time Marjorie came along, like really mm -hmm. involved with Steve Harvey. Steve had money at that time. Now, this is this is why we this is why we're shady but fair. Mary mm -hmm. said that, but Steve alleges that he mm -hmm. had saved some millions. And when he when he got a divorce was when he realized that his ex was the one who was taking money out of accounts and, you know, properties and all that kind of stuff were in her name. Mary alleges that she didn't get anything from the divorce except $40,000 for six months. And that came four years after the divorce. So that's when we present you with what, what people have said. And you guys, the subscribers, make up your own opinions about how it all plays out. But I do think that there are truths in every side. And the reason I say that is Steve also said that he would just sign the checks, meaning he wasn't doing the day, the daily banking and all that. And even Mary admitted that she wasn't necessarily either. She would give her credit card to people. And it wasn't until that that person was no longer working. Just she said, give me the credit card back. So I think when you have an instance where you're working, 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 you have all this money coming in, you're not necessarily used to it. You begin to trust the people in your circle. So maybe there is some truth to what Steve was saying as it regards to his money was in his account one day and it was not in his account another day. Yeah. The reason I think there is validity to that is because he also said that Marjorie is the one who is like doing the books and, and controlling the money now. And that Marjorie is the one who is signing stuff. So that just may be the way that he did it. Maybe he saw his mom do that. You know, dad comes home after work, gives his mom the check. The mom writes, pays all the bills. Who knows? We don't know all of it, but what we try to do is give you guys both sides of it. And that is what Steve had to say. Absolutely. I want to give a shout out again to Essie Berry because she <laughs> just got the best mind ever because she'd be remembering all the dates. She remember all the details of everything. I done sat here and, and, and totally forgot some stuff. But shout out to her and her brain and her memory because it's on point, girl. And shout out to Mims for having having me over here and just running this great live. I mean, it's just been going amazing, Mims. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I like to hear all sides. If, if Steve wanted to come on, we could talk to him. Come I, on, Steve. Come on, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I enjoy those kind of things. And uh, like I said, I will be doing um, a conversation with Geneva about how she got to, she's almost at 100,000 people, y'all. There is a method to building a YouTube channel, um, gaining, you know, trust with your followers and seeing, you know, 
your channel take off. Geneva is a prime example of that. So on my MIMS YouTube chips, the it's actually pinned in the chat. You can um you can definitely subscribe there. And people like Geneva, who are at almost 100,000, can kind of give you secrets and the way that her mind worked to get her to 100,000. Because she not only has that, she has like Spotify. Are you an Apple as well? I I probably am. I probably am because I don't kind of stuck it and put stuff everywhere. So I probably am. I think I'm on every platform that there is to have a platform. I think I'm on all of them. Every single so, one. I have Maybe. dropped it. I have dropped Geneva's link again. Um, my link is pinned. Definitely follow Mim's YouTube chips to see Geneva. And maybe, just maybe, we'll be lucky enough to have Geneva. Because I'm still listening to her audiobooks. So maybe we'll come on another time and do another juicy chapter. Um, because the lady, the way she says she had to dress in these like silk dresses and saunter into the room. <laughs> and open the door a certain way. And she said that Steve would be, you know, he's the kind of person who watches the woman walk. And she thinks that that is one of his turn-ons and he'll just be sitting there with the cigar, making, you, you walk like Wendy from Potomac. You know, you kind of saunter a snake through a room. <laughs> yeah, that's but, um, how she yeah. walks the room. He just sitting back there. Can, can you just imagine with his legs all of them? Come on, baby. Come on, baby, with a cigar, yes. Steve, Steve has a type. Y'all better go over there and listen to that book read, Men Will Lie When the Truth Will Do. His king, his queen, and his other woman. Check it out, people, check it out. But, um, okay, guys, this was really <laughs> great. I appreciate it. I have some more content that I think should be coming out a little bit later today, but we got to let Geneva go. She's a busy lady. Um, Geneva, we got to get you connected to a manager who does, like, voiceovers. Never even thought about it. Look, Mims, you heard the story. That I hadn't even planned on reading this book, but we'll get into it later on. But that hadn't even, it wasn't even my plan. It just happened. It just happened. So we make stuff you. happen around here on this channel. Geneva was hey. talking to me yesterday, and I was like, I'm ushering a different type of YouTube. It's shady, but it's fair. And, you know, she was like, you know, you don't. There's no, you don't, you know, I'll come on your show. You don't have to do anything for me. I'm like, that's not it. Over here on Make It Make Sense, we build relationships with people. And we, you know, whatever side you fall on, we're fair. That's why people, you know, even people who might like Steve will hear me talk about this and understand that I'm just giving both sides of the story. And I still give you Steve's point of view based on what Steve has said in interviews. So, or, we're ushering in a different type of YouTube. There'll be no YouTube beefs or anything over like that over here. We support other content creators. So thank you so much, Geneva. This was definitely entertaining. I know uh, my DMs are going to pop about this one because you're funny. <laughs> and I want to say thank you to Mims. He was a sweetheart when he contacted me. We've only talked a few times. And I did tell Mims yesterday when he said that he would like for me to come on. I said, absolutely no problem, Mims. I said, this is not for me. I said, this is all for you. You know, because I don't talk about the Steve Harvey thing a million times. So if there's any way that I could get some whatever on your channel. And then Mims was like, no, 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 no. We don't do that, Janine. We're doing this both ways. You're coming over here on my channel. I want to make sure that I tell the people about you and tell them where to follow you. And I, you know, he said, this is how make it make sense work. And I said, well, thank you so much. <laughs> wow. I appreciate that. Anytime you want me back, just let me know. So thank you, ma'ams, again to you and all of your subscribers and followers for having me over here today. I really do appreciate it. And to my people and people who don't know me, mwah, I hope you have a fabulous day today. You wonder how the children feel about this? I'm working on a video. I'm working on a video about that. So you will see how the children feel about it. But thank you guys. We gotta go. Appreciate it. Like the video on your way out. In fact, I'll do my um, I'll do my intro for an outro. This is a mess, Geneva. Be prepared. Okay. <laughs> we'll do we'll do a couple of them. Make it make sense. Could somebody please make it make sense? Make it make sense, tell me how you squeeze it. Make it make sense, tell me about the things that you say. Make it make sense, tell me about the things in your dream. Let me work out all the things in between. Make it make sense, tell me how you squeeze it.
squeeze in them jeans. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things that you see. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things of your dreams. Hey, let me drug out all the things in between. Make it make sense. She lied, and I should have known better when I seen her hair. I got a feeling. Oh. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Oh, Bye, like, y'all. Oh, that was funny. I like 